I had the pleasure to chat with Mac and Sid of Kings North. They recently opened their tasting room in March of 2021. Kings North is all about family through and through. There's a good chance on a sunny Saturday afternoon, you'll get the chance to talk with Mac and Sid's mom, who is helping out in the tasting room. Outside of family, what I enjoy about Kings North is how solid their pinots are, but also they're bringing in fruit from Southern Oregon to kind of change it up a little bit. Don't be surprised to get a Nebbiello, a Tempranillo, or a Cab during your tasting. Please enjoy this interview with Mac and Sid of Kings North. Cheers. Welcome to Wine Notes, where we take the concept of a wine tasting note to a whole new experience by highlighting the people and stories of wine from vineyard to glass. Please enjoy today's episode, and without further delay, cheers. Welcome, Mac, Sid. You know, thank you for taking the time today. This is uh, quite the, the turnaround. You know, normally I'm out here and there's a bunch of people here and you're hustling and bustling all around and like to sit down with you. We're happy to sit. That's what happy for coming out. Yeah, yeah no, it. this is quite a treat. So, uh, I'll pour us a little bit of wine right. and we'll kind of dive into it. Um, okay, cool. And as I'm kind of pouring this, if, uh, if I read correctly, like your roots are in Madison, Wisconsin. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. So we moved out here, oh, just over like seven and a half years ago now. And it's gone by like a flash. So <laughs> well, I can only imagine. So, you know, your whole family was in Madison, Wisconsin? I was um, in the Waukesha area. McGuanago, actually, is a really okay. small town. But uh, yeah, so we kind of all grew up there and then we all kind of branched out. When we grew up, we were all like, we told our parents, hey, as soon as we're done with college, Around Wisconsin because we didn't want to do it the cold anymore. So we'll right. take the rain any day. So yeah, so my brother moved to Arizona. We moved out here for the right. wine industry and yeah. So yeah, we kind of got the wine bug when we were in college. Going school together. Yeah. yeah, we were going to school together. Um, yeah, we went overseas to Australia and beer was too expensive, so we started drinking wine and kind of <laughs> got into it. Right. And so yeah. I was reading about that, but first off, cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Thank you. <laughs> I really like the label, by the way. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? I need to look at that. All right. Um, well, the map is out of the gate, so that's good. <laughs> you know, that's always great. So you were you went to Australia. Yep. Yeah, so we yeah, what, like, what were you like studying? You were studying abroad. What like what was your interest in studying? Uh, it was a, a Bible college, actually. Uh, my sister went there, my brother went there, and it was just kind of something we decided to do because they had such a great, fun experience doing it. So we stayed in Australia for six months, then went to uh, New Zealand for six months after that. Right. And it was more, it was kind of like a gap year. Kind of like, like a gap year, just to kind of, right. yeah, kind of explore and do something different. And we chose Australia because, I don't know, we like to chill on the beach a lot. Just drink beer and chill on the beach kind of thing, so yeah. Yeah, but you couldn't drink beer. It was, it was yeah, it was, uh, it's, it's it's wild. So coming from Wisconsin, that's one of the great things we always say is the, the beer prices there, um, super cheap compared to everywhere else in the state. So right. sticker shock going to Australia then. But uh, yeah, anyways, we uh, had our sister in Australia at the same time as us, actually. She, she lived there for two years. And so um, she got into the wine scene there before we did and kind of introduced us to it. And, um, yeah, anyways, it, it was a great introduction to wine, but then uh, when we moved back to go to school together in Madison, um, that's where it really started to sink in. I mean, Sid definitely caught the wine bud first. Uh, so yeah, um, that led to us having a great bottle shop in Wisconsin that we would go, uh, you know, pick out a bottle really every week or so and right. try to do, you know, blind tastings basically just like this. Uh, and, <laughs> You know, test each other, and then we got some friends to you know grab a bottle maybe like once a month when we get together and um, well, do the same thing. Yeah, and uh, go to like college and just drink water. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyways, it was uh, I think fascinating for Sid just to, and I think for most people, just how wine just has a, a, a essence and 
ability to capture a place. And so, right. um, well, I actually like started listening. I don't know if you know Gary Vaynerchuk. Gary oh, King, yeah. yeah, like my <laughs> library to me. Oh my gosh, yeah. Gary V. He's so crazy. like, yeah, like I was doing economics, switched over to horticulture because I hated economics. <laughs> right. And I stopped all my classes, switched to horticulture, and like talked to the counselor, like, hey, I want to do this. And then I knew nothing about wine. So I was like, I just like looked on the internet, saw Gary Vee's Wine Library TV, and that's how I like started. I just would like taste what he would taste and like just take notes on what he was doing. Right. So that was kind of like an intro to me of wine. And then like during my horticulture thing that I was doing, I was able to make an internship with this guy, Brian, who had a, vine a vineyard in Wisconsin that's just an acre. So I was able to make an internship out of that. And Mac ended up working with me, so we did that for summer. Right. And then things just kept snowballing. And yeah, then it was like, I'm ready, almost, ready, almost ready to graduate. Mac was graduating before me. He's like, hey, what do I, I don't know what I want to do. I'm like, hey, why don't you try like the wine industry? And so he went on winebusiness.com, found a job here in Oregon. And so he did that. Came out here blind too, I didn't know anyone. Or anything <laughs> so um yeah ended up getting a job over at Tulpa maple they're a custom crush um so they see yeah 13 winemakers about every year make their wine through there so right. yeah it was a great experience just to kind of learn wine from the ground up the production side and that's really what we wanted to do um right. it was kind of the mission when we decided to come out this way so i worked there for a harvest in 2014 was my first year and, then, and we were still like trying to navigate, like, hey, where do we want to be on the West Coast? We know we want to be on the West Coast because it's just quality of wines better out here. I mean, I mean, I've never been to New York and Finger Lakes and all that kind of stuff, but from what I know, uh, like this good quality out here. Um, so Matt, I like he called me during mid harvest. And I'm like, hey, how's it going? He's like, dude, you need to come out here. Right, like, it's sweet. I was like, yeah. okay. So I graduated. I slept, Mac was living with a lady, right, in Uber. <laughs> yeah, I rented out a room, basically. So, and then might as well. Yeah, I mean, I was never in it. We were, I mean, at the time I was working, you know. Like 19 yeah, hours a day. <laughs> yeah. She was like really concerned too, because she, yeah, no idea of the wine industry or what it entails. So she was right. like, she came and confronted me once and was like, are you okay? Like, or, you know, she's like, you're working you some serious hours there. So she was like wondering about the whole operation. I'm like, this is completely normal. <laughs> Don't need to be a lot of kind of thing. So, yeah. Um, Going back just a little bit to sure. Wisconsin and getting an internship. Yeah. You know, so Kings North, right, is a, is a homage to, you know, the king of the north, varietal. Yeah. yeah. But I'm curious, that, that grape, that varietal, I'm like, what kind of wine do you make out of it? Do you have to worry about botrytis? Like, I, I am so curious. It's, um, yeah, so it's a, it's a great bridal that originated in Madison, Wisconsin. And so when we, when we were trying to conceptualize uh, the label, the name, we did want to pay, you know, basically a tribute to where we fell in love with wine, the roots, to be a point about it, so to right. speak. But, um, yeah, so we, we were um, looking up and we just felt like that was, uh, yeah, captured the essence, I think, of what we were all about. And... You know, it's the most cold hardy grape in the world. It can withstand like, you know, negative 30, negative 40 uh, during the dormant season and things like that. Right. So um, the thing is so, and this is the secret about King of the North, it doesn't make for great wine. So that's the thing we, we like to push aside a little bit, but. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, you don't hear great wines coming out of Wisconsin. Right, yeah. Um, and that's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so I mean, is it like a, a red varietal? Is it a white? That's a red varietal. And so, like, when I was working that internship, like the clones you or the great browns you get is like Marquette, St. Pippin, Marshall Foch, like things you don't usually ever hear about. And they're just for cold hardiness, right. just withstand that temperature. But, like, the essence I always hear when, like, because there are some wineries in Wisconsin, you go taste them. It's interesting. And it's like decent wine for, like, the conditions. For I mean, the conditions right, right, of growing. Yeah. And it's always like the term was foxy. It's like a foxy. <laughs> like it's kind of rustic, kind of like right, that. Right. Yeah, so it's very interesting. And it was cool to grow, very vigorous because it rains all the time in Wisconsin during the summer. Right. So it's like you're always just controlling vigor. Um, you're spraying a bunch of stuff. I mean, you get Japanese beetles there, which you don't get here, and they just oh. eat around the whole beach. So it's like yeah, you, have to, it. you have to spray some not so nice things on the vine, which is, but that's what you gotta do. So. Right. Sense. Yeah. Um, so you're talking about 
your sister, you know, getting the wine bug. Did she like influence the wine bug? Did she like what? Uh, she influenced us drinking. It really was just kind of a casual like wine was new to us, and it was you know our first introduction to it there. But something clicked. I mean, it was okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I can't say it was like any like. There's not a big wine. I don't know what you would call it. Wine culture, wine scene, culture. especially where we were from, Wisconsin. Right. right. No. Steer and cheese. I think. Steer and cheese and crackers. Yeah. We had crackers last night. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. It's just we kind of just rolled with it. I don't know. Right. Yeah. I won't forget the the first time I came out here, right? And I had a chance to talk with your mom a little bit. Sure. sure. It was just the spirit that's out here, you know, and getting the whole family involved. It's just it's unique yeah. and it's pleasurable so how did like everybody like you the, the, obviously the two of you migrated out here right but like it seems like everybody else followed you as well yeah, yeah. well thanks by the way i mean that's huge i mean it was awesome getting you too and I, you caught us so early on too which we you know it's fun for us that you know uh what you're doing now and well, we're I, grateful for it well, I, I, I have to thank uh, lars right right, right. I mean, yeah shout out lars yeah big shout out lars yeah, <laughs> yeah. Lars. yeah. 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 Um, yeah, so we, so I moved out here in, in 2014 to do uh, a harvest out here. Um, it was kind of like a scouting trip, so to speak. I called up Sid, he followed, you know, six months after. Um, and we both met some really great connections too, just with mentors that we still have to this day, um, kind of coaching us in the farming side of things, winemaking side of things. But um, yeah, it was um, about a year and a half, probably later that our parents uh, were basically empty nesters back in Wisconsin and was, you know, they have four kids, us, I've uh, got an older brother, older sister, right. and they're saying, what are we still doing here? I mean, we're a tight-knit family, so um, they said, you know, I, I think it's time to make a move, so they started looking, and so um, they'd been to Oregon a couple times, loved it out here, and uh, yeah, anyways, it, it, was, it was more or less when they were looking to move, just kind of in the background, I almost want to say that they were like, you know, it'd be nice to move here someday. Right. Um, anyways, they, they called up a realtor to kind of check around. And the funny thing is, it, it felt like fate in a way, especially just getting this property in, in particular, that uh, my mom, when she visited, um, we were in Newburgh, that's where we were living, but she uh, would drive Bell Road and just said, you know, wouldn't it be great someday to own property here on Bell? And, uh, the very next day, they you know booked a realtor, and nothing was available. But the next day, they went back out with the realtor to do some more um, house hunting, basically. And this place popped up on a foreclosure, and oh, wow. um, the realtor. I mean, it was in bad shape. There was no vineyard here. This building wasn't here. Uh, the house had holes from the like, <laughs> from the top floor to the kitchen. I mean, it was in rough shape. The, the realtor, even before they got in, said. She just wanted to go to the next place. <laughs> um, but yeah, they just had a feeling. I mean, obviously the, the property was here and they knew what we were into. And, um, I, you know, in the back of their mind, they said, you know, it'd be nice to plant this someday. Um, but yeah, anyways, they, they jumped on it. And so, um, which was crazy to them because they said, what are we doing? We still live in Wisconsin. Now we own a property in Oregon. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh shit, basically. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, and then uh, we just, Started chipping away at it basically, and then uh, my sister moved out this way too. She was in med school down in Arizona, and, you know, placed a residency here. And they took her on full time, so wow. uh, we just had one other brother in Phoenix area. We're trying to get him here, so we're trying to get him. He's a biochemist, so like, we could definitely use you. So. Yeah, well, definitely. <laughs> yeah, totally. come on, we need, we need yeah, yeah. chemistry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're always on the phone with them, you know. Yeah. Chatting him up on analysis and stuff like that. So yeah, but, but I'm sure at Christmas time he's like, okay, here's my uh, here's my Christmas <laughs> wish list. <laughs> yeah, right. Please, please bring me some wine. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it just kind of snowballed. I mean, I, I think wine is kind of an easy thing to jump on um, as well. I mean, they were all excited that we were going to do this. And to be honest, I mean, we're we're young at this. We we realize that, I and mean, that isn't lost on us. But um, we had some really great connections when we got here. Just a huge blessing. And um, yeah, just really had a push from, from people uh, that believed in us and just said, go for it. So um, yeah. And you're talking about mentors and people that were here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sure you've like, 
encapsulated the Oregon wine community and how generous and like all oh, yeah. that. All that, that was the drop. I mean, right. when I told Sid to, you know, when well, I was going back for Starbucks, I said, this is yeah. the community here. It's well, he was working, he was working 12th of April and he was working with Hannah Miller at 12th of April for the harvest. And I came down, didn't have a job, just flew down here. That was my fault. I said, I said, I will definitely get you a job. Yeah. The time <laughs> here. So I sleep on the Mac, on the cot in the next little room. And he's like, hey, this girl, Hannah Miller, has, their parents have a 20 acre vineyard in Dundee. I'm like, hey, you should go talk to them. Maybe you could just, I don't know, work for them or something, whatever. I'm like, okay. So I met with them and they're like salt of the earth, nicest people. And they're like, hey, we have some friends who just brought pop. Uh, bought property in Yamaha Carlton, right between Beacon Hill and Bear Sang. Like, right. vineyard right there, it's called Sisu. And they're like, yeah, you wanna work for them? I'm like, yeah, sure. And I didn't know much about vines, so it's like, I was able to learn from the ground up because I talked to them, they taught me how to prune and do all that kind of stuff, so. Right. And then, yeah, it's just working with different wineries. It's like, you can call them whenever you want, but like, right. you have a bond with them then, so it's pretty cool. Right, and then you have a bond. I can't remember the vineyard. I can't remember the person. So my apologies. Yeah. But like, I think it was like the, the Pinot Gris. Right. Is like. Yeah. So that's the Millers who we got okay. the Pinot Gris from. Yeah. So. Yeah, they have. They I forget how many acres of Pinot Gris they have, but they have a ton of Pinot Noir. They do a bunch of the Chardonnay. They just planted. But it's like very cool to finally be able to ask, hey, can we get some fruit from you and make right. it? And that was actually the first wine we ever bottled in this facility, nice. which is really cool. And it's called the Miller Family Cuvée, so that's kind of cool, kind of a that homage. Is, so. That is cool. Yeah. So. And then you have like a connection, uh, I, I, I can't remember names off the top of my head, but yeah. uh, up at Women's Hills, right? Totally, right. And so that, that's definitely been, uh, for me, my mentor, and Sid too, I mean, um, throughout this whole thing. But um, so when I was working at 12th and Maple, um, one of the winemakers that, that goes through there is Byron Dooley. So he's the owner, winemaker for Seven Hearts in Women's Hills. And so, um, it was kind of my goal going into that, knowing that it was a big production facility, right. which is amazing. I mean, it's state of the art. They do everything from, you know, big labels, pushing up, you know, 100,000 cases, but they also cater to the smaller producer too. So someone like Byron, who at the time was doing, you know, four to 5,000 cases a year. So, um, anyways, in the back of my head, I said, I really want to make a connection with a small producer, um, and kind of go from there. And, uh, it was actually on the bottling line um, that I was really introduced to, to Byron's wines. I was seeing go buy me Pinot Noir, Rosé, Syrah, Tanat, Merlot. Just so at, at the time he was doing like, you know twenty plus different varietals for one vintage. I was like, who is this guy? <laughs> so, um, just as fate would have it, he was actually looking for someone in the tasting room. Lars was the tasting room manager. Uh, at the time, so that's our connection, but um, yeah, we just kind of hit it off from there. And so it's uh, seven years that I've been working for Byron, so that, that's amazing. Yeah. And so that, that connection with Byron mm -hmm. is kind of like part of the reason why you have all these extra varietals. Yeah, right? totally. Yeah. 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 Right. So for, for next year, you're looking at uh, a Salle Blanc, you know, Rosé, Pinot, Grenache, Mourvedre, Syrah, and, yeah. and, a, and a Cab. Right, right. Uh, that's amazing. <laughs> We're pretty stoked about it. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> so, so our plan, um, kind of going forward from here, um, is obviously we'll do Pinot each and every year. So we planted this vineyard back in 2018. Um, it's about five acres. So when it's all said and done, we'll, we'll probably get close to about 600 cases of Pinot from here, which for us, I feel like for a small producer, that's more than enough Pinot to work with a right. year. Um, but what we want to do is kind of fill that out with wines, uh, kind of on a rotation uh, basis. So varieties of spice of life is kind of our theory. So right. uh, the beauty about winemaking here in the Willamette is we're so close to Columbia Valley. And we just, you know, even back in Wisconsin, we loved going to the bottle shop and pulling wines from Walla Walla, Columbia Valley just in general. So right. um, yeah, our goal is to produce kind of a rotational wines from there as well. So. It's, you know, a four hour trek for me and the truck and trailer just to go grab some fruit, bring it back here to process. So it's, it's been a lot of fun. So we started that back in 2018. So we did a, a Tempranillo and uh, Nebbiolo um, in 2018. Right. And so 2020 we're doing Cab, and then this year we did, yeah, Grenache Sauvignon and Vedra. And 
stuff like so um we're having fun with it and yeah it's teaching people so far it's basically right sounds good it's the biggest thing right yeah no it'll be uh it'll be interesting that in a few years you might actually gravitate to you know to maybe some other varietals or not other varietals but like i really like you know yeah. this or i like you know, doing the Moldendra or right. you know, so the lesson we learned from Byron was he would just be like, Oh, like even like this last year he made a Barbera. He's like, Oh, I've just been drinking a lot of Barbera. Right. He's like, I want to make it. He's like, Okay, cool. So right. it's kinda like they have so many varieties like this, like why not if you can? Exactly. Yeah. 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 If not, it doesn't turn out, we'll just drink it ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you'll have a lot of extra, you know, like family Thanksgiving. And yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Last three years and years. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so this this next year we're already talking about. Um, so we did kind of Rum Valley varietals this year with the Reds. Um, we're thinking about going back to Bordeaux and doing um, kind of a traditional Bordeaux blend. So Cab Merlot, uh, Cab Franc, kind of style. So yeah, well, that'll be fun. Yeah. yeah, we hope. Yeah. So then a philosophical question mm-hmm. is wine art. Absolutely. And I think so. I, I think the way I see you is like I think the vineyards are artistic in itself. That's what we're always trying to see too, I think, is like right. you put your own footprint and fingerprint on the vineyard and that kind of makes the wine. Because wine may be, I think coming down blending, it's very artistic. You can make your blend, choose your barrels and everything. But if you can grow the beautiful fruit, I think that's that's art. That's what gets me going. So, okay. Yeah. Nice, when nice. When you're on the vineyard and it's a nice set of fruit. It's like, all right, let's pick that. And that's turning awesome. something cool. Yeah. I, I do think our philosophy is wine's made up there. It's not made in there. Okay. So, of course. Um, and I'll break for my brother said, he's found his niche. Uh, he's got two green thumbs um, and really knows what he's doing uh, out in the vineyard. He, so he managed that at uh, CC Vineyard uh, out in Yangville Carlton, which was um, how many acres? 15? 11. 11. Um, so he was out there by himself um, for those four vintages, three, four vintages. You did yeah, four so, um, well, that's how I learned. It's like, I didn't know anything. It's like, right. well, when you're able to look at the cuts you made, everything you did the previous year, it's like, hey, I did that last year. Let me look at this the next year. I can adapt, do it better, right. and just keep learning. Yeah. I mean, we don't have a big background in like the schooling of wine or like viticulture, but it's like, hey, just go out there and do it and figure it out that way. I think that's kind of what we right. Yeah, I'm, I'm a much more hands-on exactly, myself. Exactly, yeah. <clears throat> and that's what we are too, yeah. I mean, you can be philosophical and you can get into theories and yeah, right. all that. Yeah. But you learn, to, you know, different people learn different ways. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. Much more of a hands-on kind of. Yeah, yeah, same here. Yeah. So, to answer your question, just looking at Sid out there, um, He's, he's looking at a vine as like a blank canvas, so it, I think it is art because he treats every vine differently. The pruning style that he does, you know, the leaf pulling, um, thinning, all of it is done right. individually per vine. Where, whereas I know you work with crews and things like that, where it's it's not so much that. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, um, yeah, it is what it's just different styles. Right. So right. it's just, yeah, I tried to just base it on, hey, this is the vine, this is the vigor I'm seeing this year, this is the buds I'm going to leave on it, this is the balance I think when I look at the vine and the fruits there, what I think is right. right. And then it's, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. Like, I wish I had a more scientific way, but when it's like, no. you work the field, it's like, yeah, I think this is right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, so. And so you farm, uh, the vineyard out here 100% organically. Yeah, organically. Uh, I'm done. Um, yeah, it's just Mac and I. My mom works a lot with us during um, like the season, doing shoot positioning and all that kind of stuff. My dad. My dad's more of the tinker. The tinker. He fixes <laughs> most of fix things. It's like, hey, dad, we don't have time to do this. Can you figure out a way to do this and figure your stuff? Yeah. So he's good like that. But yeah, organically farm. Um, yeah, and it, it takes a lot of effort, but I think it's worth it in the end. It is, it is. Yeah, so we've been, this last vintage we just put into Bauer 2020, I think it's pretty, it's going to be very good. It's very big because it's a lower elevation site, but I think it's going to be a good vintage. To, and we're going to release that this spring. This yeah. spring, so yeah. we'll, we'll hopefully people will dig it. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> it will, yes. I, you know, I, have no, I mean, from everything else that you all have produced, I mean, awesome. Yeah, I don't see why you wouldn't. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
when you go to your website, you know, you get that first flash, you know, are you, you know, 21 years, you know, old or whatnot, and you have that, that picture of like all the different winemaking tools and everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Yeah. There's a couple things in there. I'm like, I don't know what that is. Yeah. yeah. You know, so on there, there's a, there's like a couple lines of like, I don't know, they're almost like round circle clips. What are, are they? Red? Red? Yeah. Those are, those are red. Yeah, right. They're, they're red clips. Yeah, so we use that look all over our video. If you look down our lines, right. they're all over the wires. So that's just for shoot positioning. So like okay. we have three wires that you use for just canopy management to hold right. all the shoots up. Okay. And then what we do as they grow is we clip like a lot of clips on them just to okay. keep everything <laughs> growing like separately from each other. Okay. Basically. Okay. And let the grapes grow in their nice individual little space. And Beautiful. Yeah, yeah so no, I just hadn't you know, I'm sure that I had seen them, but I just couldn't place. Yeah, that, that, you know, well, you can go grab them if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Right. Uh, the, the other thing that was on there, this looks like a bottle of pink spray. Yeah, that's that's just for cleaning pruners. It's just like alcohol kind of thing. Okay. I, I really don't use it. It's just something else. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. That was our friend Buddy and Nick, who are our good friends. They're also on our website. When you like look at our people, they're the last guys. Right. And Nick. Is the guy who helped us design the label. He's a high school friend, and Buddy was like my best friend through high school. Um, yeah, he's our like photographer and stuff. And yeah. so we invited them out like on our first ever bottling in 2016, and they came out and took photos of like most of the pictures you see on our website are done by them. They like went in when we were bottling, like took close ups of everything. So yeah, no, that's awesome. Yeah, so they're pretty. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. The timing on that is perfect too because it was. The week prior to uh, Buddy reaching out to us about helping us with the label, I was literally on Microsoft Word trying to like create something. Create something. <laughs> I was like, this is not me. So it's, it's uh, not. Yeah. No, yeah. No. Yeah. So uh, uh, they reached out like the next week and we're like, hey, uh, we'd love to help you out with this. And I was like, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So I was like, thank God, because <laughs> our label would not look like that. <laughs> so then whose hat? is in that picture and like is there a story or anything behind that baseball hat? Uh, yeah, is that is that the green bay that's 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 no. no no it almost looks like there's a green bay packer hat no it's right. not a green bay it almost looks like a little figurine of a dancer oh yeah something. that's a dave matthews band hat oh so we're huge dave matthews band fans or have been for ever right. and uh no that's just my that was my vineyard hat and it's just right. worn and torn by the sun so right we put it in there because nick was like oh man that's so cool like we want to like picture of the vineyard hat, and right? Like, sweat on it, so yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, I think I still have it. So, yeah. so actually, Sid was torn um, between coming out here and actually working for um, Dave, weren't you, in Virginia or West Virginia? Oh, so <laughs> yeah. So when I first came out, my buddy or my roommate, he knew somebody who worked for Dave Matthews Vineyard in Western Virginia. I think it's in Virginia. Um, was it Blenheim Vineyard? Okay. And he has a, his own vineyard there. And I was like this close to like getting an internship at Dave Matthews. I was like so stoked that it didn't end up happening. But my well, here in Virginia is actually producing some yeah. pretty good wine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, like I we bought some of his Blenheim stuff and it was pretty darn good. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Some good stuff. Man. Wow. So yeah, they do make good quality out of these coasts. They do. Yes. All right. Well, I have some uh, rapid fire questions for you. You know, for you all, uh, in you know, you can answer individually or you know, at the same time. No, <laughs> <laughs> and I think I know the answer to this question. Okay. Who's your favorite artist to play during harvest? <sighs> My, yeah, mine's easy. My favorite shapes. Yeah, absolutely. okay, hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Um, this last one it was Bob Seger. Oh, big Bob Seger guy. I mean, Dave Matthews is always playing too. Taylor Swift is always on. Yeah, there's uh, another one we always play. We're big. Those are probably top three for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you wouldn't know, but we're big pop girls. Like we're like so <laughs> pop. So <laughs> okay. I, I thought you were gonna say Dave Matthews fan uh, across the board. Oh, oh, oh sorry, I forget the Taylor Swift thing, man. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, we're big. Yeah. I think that we're like those people, like, oh, they've been to X amount of shows. Like, yeah, we've been to quite a few Dave Matthews fans shows. So yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Do you have a favorite song by David Matthews? Oh, number 41. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the one. Uh, I like Crush. I don't know. If you're... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Are you David uh, Matthews guy? A little bit, not huge. Oh, okay. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad we were able to talk about him on the podcast. Huh? 
Yeah, he had a, there was an amphitheater right outside where we grew up, and that was one of his stomping, stomping grounds during his tours. So it was always like, it was like 20 minutes away, so you know, it's great every summer. Yeah. yeah. Your favorite indulgent food? Oh, my favorite indulgent food. Um, it's probably a Big Mac. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I'd have to go with hot wings. Those are probably yeah. Okay. Have hot. you have you seen hot ones on YouTube? I have, yeah, totally. Have you tried that hot sauce? I don't so I love hot wings, but like to go that spicy, I don't understand the pain side of it. Like the pain side of food, <laughs> I don't need. So. Okay, okay. Uh, but yeah, those are probably guilty pleasure. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Nice. Uh, if you could choose a su- superpower, what would it be? Man, uh, water into wine would make our life a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> that would be really nice. Yeah, that would be really nice. Probably, I mean, obviously, I'm flying. I think flying would be tight. That would be, yeah, yeah that would be pretty cool. Let's skip all the traffic and just, yeah. just see it. Going to Vegas. <laughs> By the way, what about me? Yeah. Oh, boy. Flying would be there. Um, you know, I, I think. I'm conflicted between two different ones, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, invisibility. I'm, I suppose the second one on my mind is like invisibility. And then to be be able to read other people's thoughts. Oh yeah. Right. But that might be that's the first. That's what yeah. 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 right? Yeah, yeah. You might like, eh, that might be information I don't want to know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, like my thing with invisibility is like, well, are you like a creeper then? <laughs> <laughs> I try not to. Do yeah. That. Right. <laughs> um, harvest notes. Are they digital or uh, handwritten? Uh, they're mostly in my head, and then <laughs> so, uh, we're, so we're we're <laughs> opposites. So uh, yeah, Sid. I don't know. Sid, Sid is uh, all in his head. Gets wants to get it done. Whatever it is he needs to do, and I'm like, dude, talk to me. Like, what do we need to do? <laughs> so talk to me. <laughs> talk to me. Yeah. Um, so you're you're more on paper. I am, I transfer it to... Yeah, Max, our business guy, he's on the computer 24-7, doing right. that thing, and then I'm kind of, give me a slab of paper, and I'll write down my note on there, and then Max like, I, I don't organize this. <laughs> this. This harvest, I lost it, because there was like 30 sheets of paper that were just like, I, I, I hand them one with all the different barrels, all the different skews on it, and just say, right. just, just write it on me. I was like, I'll print you one if you need it. He hands me to like digitize them, like 30 sheets of like scrap paper. I'm like, what do I do with this? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But uh, so yeah, paper, on. paper, he's Excel. Yeah. There you go. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Favorite superhero? Um, favorite superhero? Probably Batman. Yeah, that's the fact that he's in the, in the conversation and just being a, a normal dude, I right. guess, is, is cool. Just watched like Marvel the other day. Um, yeah, that kind of just been yeah, Batman because the movies were the best. I thought. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, and to wrap it up, the last book you read. The last book I read. It could be audio. It could be physical. I do listen to some audio books. Uh, Harry Potter was the last one I was. I was listening to Harry Potter on audio books. It's, Great listen to in the venue. Yeah. Oh, I could imagine. Yeah, yeah. 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 So probably very proud of that. Okay. The last book I probably read was the um, Wine Science Applications. Was probably <laughs> the last book I read. Was Stop. it a nice uh, book to go to bed at night? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. After the first paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to get through like the science of wine myself. Yeah, yeah. And literally, it's like three paragraphs, and I go. Like, oh, yeah, I'll see you later. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's a thick book. Yeah, it Long is. Long way to do. Yeah. yeah. What's your last book? Or is that the one too? Uh, my last book. Well, I'm currently reading the uh, the memoir from Will Smith. Okay, oh, cool. cool. It's like 16 hours long. Okay. And, but there's so many just good stories in there, cool. and uh, uh, just life lessons. Sure. Yeah, right. One of the you know at one point he was growing up and his dad had this ice shop, so him and his brother had to spend like all, like over a year building like a freaking concrete wall, brick by 
brick by brick by brick. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> yeah. And it took them a year to do it. Wow. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. And it just instilled in them, like, you know, you can't think of building the brick wall as building the brick wall. And you'll be like, it's just one brick at a time. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this one brick the best that I can. Yeah. And before you know it, you get a freaking brick wall. Yeah. yeah. You know, it kind of, you know, I'm sure you can relate with like what you've done here. Right, I mean, you've remodeled the house, you got this structure, you have a plant in the vineyard, yeah. you're getting grapes. I mean, it's it's crazy how it snowballs. Yeah, it's just yeah. like, it's just, like, it's gotta keep moving, keep doing it. Go right, on, go on. yeah, small little increments at a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Another good book I listened to was uh, Green Light. That's oh, fun. Yeah, that was great. That was a great book. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Uh, are you a Foo Fighters fan? Uh, not, I, I mean, I've heard, like, listened, I've never, yeah. Okay. So get Dave Grohl has a, uh, a memoir. Okay. It's pretty good. It's pretty darn good. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. I'll check that out for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right, should we reveal the wine? Yeah. Oh, it's, uh, I enjoyed it. I had it for lunch. I mean, I think it's a Pinot. It, it, wow. <laughs> it is a Pinot. Uh, so it is a 2017 oh, sweet. Pinot from uh, Audayant. Little yeah. Hills. Oh, very okay. cool. Yeah. yeah. The, <laughs> Andrew's the man. Yeah. 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 How do you know Andrew? Uh, so I worked at Lingua Franca for, uh, I did a harvest there, then I was the vineyard foreman for a year and did an hour of with them. And Andrew makes his wine there. So yeah. I was able to hang out with him a lot during harvest, learn stuff from him because he's super smart. <laughs> yeah, he makes wine. Yeah. I, I can only imagine the camaraderie there at Lingua Franca harvest <laughs> it's crazy because they have so many like they have all the wine they're making which is a ton of wine it's very good and then it is like five other winemakers also making there so it's just like it's like jazz there's a lot <laughs> happening there's a lot going on yeah yeah, yeah. it's cool yeah, yeah. And the, the little tent in the back right yeah like, yeah uh, i mean that's a that's a nice little tent yeah yeah, heck yeah. yeah. no that's a crazy cool facility like like when I first walked in there, I was like, this is sweet. Because it's like tanks surrounding the whole building, and then the whole floor is just empty. It's like, that's what you want for wine. Just right. an empty space where you can move stuff everywhere. So, yeah. it's very cool. That is cool. Yeah. What well, is a great wine. It's the 19? Uh, 17. Oh, 17. Oh, thanks for bringing that. Oh, yeah. Really yeah. You're welcome. Yeah, no, they haven't released the 19 yet. Okay. All right. So, um, I think it's this spring they're releasing the 19. I'm like, ooh. <laughs> 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 Well, I want to thank you, the two of you, so much for taking the time today. I really appreciate oh, it. Thank no, you. Yeah, thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for coming out as much as you do. Yeah. I'm <laughs> glad <laughs> Awesome. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you.